So this is from the Cup of Giggles. Uh, this is uh, chapter 27. And just because you have missed a little bit here, a ghost can see into the living realm, but it's like, it's like a real super foggy day to ghosts. But the living, of course, can't see ghosts at all until they appear. She felt the presence for some time. It was here, she knew, this side of the ocean. Up was the word that came to her. North, most would say. She was even Cueto, and she'd be named Queen of the Aztecs, though she had lived long before the days of the Aztec or even Mayan civilizations. The Aztecs had built a temple on her haunt, and when she showed herself, she became their goddess, the danger of even Cueto, leaving her the ghost of their dead queen. What she felt was the call of a similar spirit, that of another powerful ghost. She tuned into the Onda, as her descents would call it, the wavelength. Never in her thousands of years had she felt such power emanating from a female ghost. Elin Quinto felt a kinship with this one, for she held immeasurable potential. Then she realized it was another power. It felt female, but was not of human origin. Her curiosity was piqued. She searched until she pinpointed the powers. She, who seldom left the confines of her crumbling temple haunt, would go to them. Pop. She found herself in an unusual place. Small by her standards, it was filled with people of both worlds. Compared to her domain, there were many more spirits than she was accustomed to seeing at one time. Two of them were the ones she wished to meet. I am Ilinquento, she announced, her pride overflowing in a voice unaccustomed to speaking in public. I wish to talk to the two strong spirits. She searched the environs until her eyes fell, came upon Leanne and Sarah who hovered near her. Ah, I knew you weren't human, she said to Sarah, but you're strong. For a kitten, perhaps, Sarah gave her a chest and grinned. As I'm just a kitten, I find your name very strange. It sounds like Elan Kuwaito, Sarah pronounced the word slowly and carefully. Elan Kuwaito smiled back and then poofing, with a poofing sound transformed into a queen relaxing on her throat. Yes, that is correct. You have very good enunciation. For a kitten. You know, when we get Sarah and Cheeky Grim. And I'll add that you are strong for any ghost. I can feel you from Teru Chitla. Who you both, in fact. Teru Chitla? Leanne and Sarah asked together. It's what the Aztecs call our city. My latest descendants call it Mexico City. You must be an old ghost, Leanne. <coughs> I am. But there are older ghosts, ancient they are. Some go back to the beginning of human speech, others to before we became homo sapiens. Most of them are not strong, but they are reverent for their antiquity, both a few of the ancient prehistoric ghosts were great indeed. Were? Yes, she explained, most of our ancestor ghosts from tens of thousands of years in the past have left. What difference does it make if a ghost is weak or strong? A strong ghost can control its destiny and make its presence felt in the other reality. You must have noticed um, we can create frost and ice, make sparkly frames, flames rattle the windows, things like that. The yeah, end gave a good representation of a shrug. Then you can move things. Both the end and Sarah were all attention. Ghosts can move things in the living realm? Sarah asked in surprise. Some ghosts, yes, the most powerful among us. Watch. You know, Quenta pointed a ghostly arm through the fog between the realms of Bruce. He was reading the paper. Without looking up, he reached for it again. She moved her finger and slid the mug another few centimeters. Bruce's arm came to an absolute standstill. Still, he looked around and shook his finger in admonishment, pointing to the chair opposite and murmured, Leanne. The two ghosts gleefully flitted from one end of the coffee shop to the other. Leanne came to an abrupt halt over to Ron and Teresa. She moved Teresa's mug to one side of the table and slid his to her side of the table. Both stopped talking and looked around. Leanne, he nodded to the wife. Or Sarah, she agreed. Sarah hovered over a group of gentlemen, regulars at their usual table. She lifted a half-eaten bagel and maneuvered to, her mouth, to the mouth of its owner, who, no surprise, took a delicate bite as afraid he might hurt her. All the men at the table lifted their heads and looked around the room, gazing darting about like nervous hummingbirds. As Danica offered a customer a grande latte, they had lifted it out of the surprise server's hand. She pushed it high into the air and then sat down in front of the astonished customer. 
Leanne, Sarah, quit that. And then I can to go shaking her finger at the air. It's true, cried the lady whose coffee had taken the short flight to place insult. <laughs>